so before we begin the actual session, I'd like to welcome all of you. There seem to be a few more remote centers which have joined. I'd also like to welcome the live participants uh, who are here. Uh, I'm Sahana Murthy, and uh, this workshop is being conducted by, with, along with my colleagues, Professor Sridhar Ayer and Jai Krishnan, who's a PhD student, who all of you would have interacted either via Moodle or uh, email and so on. So you would have heard this word educational technology quite often. And if you ask somebody what is educational technology, one of the first things that comes to our mind is that it's the technology for education, such as the creation and use of technologies, examples that Professor Fatak mentioned in the previous session, uh, visualizations, educational animations, hardware like the tablets. And it can also be the creation and use of technology tools such as Moodle, which all of you may be familiar with. But educational technology is, does not stop here. And what we have on this slide is only half or one part of what constitutes educational technology. The other important part of educational technology is what we call as technology of education, as opposed to technology for education. And what we mean by technology of education is the creation and use of instructional strategies and pedagogies such as peer discussion and collaborative learning and think pair share and several other such strategies that we will go over in this workshop. And the goal of these strategies is to facilitate students learning and engagement. So the focus in technology of education is on what to do by the teacher and the learner, how to use the technology effectively rather than the technology itself. So the second thrust of educational technology forms the basis of this workshop. So actual goals of this workshop, what we will do is start by articulating the objectives for your course. And the reason is that when, whenever you want to use a technology or an instructional strategy or content, it really doesn't make sense unless we are very clear as to what are the objectives and there's a formal technical way in education, in the subject of education on how to write learning objectives for the course. So the session immediately following this one is on writing learning objectives for your course. We will also explore ICT tools appropriate for some of these objectives and learn effective pedagogical strategies for teaching with these tools. And most importantly, by the end of this workshop, throughout, during, and by the end, you will apply these strategies to design materials and activities using ICT for your own courses. So let's actually just start off with what we call as an activity. You will often see these blue slides with some question and so on. What I'd like to request the RC coordinators is to uh, enable the poll function. For the participants, since we've been talking so much about technology, here is a question for you. It's a poll voting or a polling question. So which ICT tools, ICT by the way stands for Information and Communication Technologies, which ICT tools have you used in your courses other than computer, projector and PowerPoint? So what I'd like you to do right now is just open your notebooks and list all the ICT tools that you have used in the course till now other than these three mentioned. So take about 30 seconds or 45 seconds to do this. All the activities that are on blue slides, all participants in the remote centers as well as the live participants shall be expected to do. So everybody please take out your notebooks and write down any technology other than these three that you've used. And while you're doing that, here is a poll question which we'll enable. And the question is, in your remote center, what is the average number of ICT tools used among the participants other than computer projector and PowerPoint slides? Is it 0 to 2, 3 to 5, 6 to 10 or more than 10? So we will enable a poll through AVU and this is your first experience with using technology and interactive learning strategies within a classroom. So each participant can simply raise their hands in their own remote center to let the coordinator know how many technologies you have used in addition to computer projector and PowerPoint. 
and the RC coordinator please respond using the AVU poll as to approximately what is the average number of tools that are being used in your center other than these three. So, we have started the polling, we are getting results, please submit how many tools that are being used in your RC. Okay. So, we have about 115 centers that have submitted a poll so far and what we find is that 60 centers or so say 0 to 2. Now, I am going to assume that the average there is somewhere around 1, 1 or 1 1.5, the median is there and close to 50 centers say 3 to 5. So, what this means is that more than 50 percent of you have used at least one if not more tools other than these three. And why we ask this poll? So, this is a survey kind of a poll. It is good information, useful information for us in trying to get an idea of what tools you are familiar with. And you can also use quick survey type of polls like the one we just did to find out where your students are, what is the demographic and so on. In today's lab this afternoon, you will be exploring a lot more about how to set such questions. Okay, so, let us move on now. So, why this workshop as in why, uh, why should we have this workshop which is not only about content, but about pedagogy and we have mentioned some points. Let us actually go through a summary here and I think all of you will agree with me when I say that ICT tools in education is there everywhere and everyone including the government has been encouraging its use for its various benefits. So, you would have heard of learning management systems and MOOCs and animation and wiki and so on. However, as I mentioned over and over again in the last 10 minutes, the potential of these technologies is lost without the appropriate pedagogical strategies. So, what you as teachers need to have a knowledge of is which ICT tools are useful, when are they useful, that is for what learning objectives are they useful and how to choose a tool for a given objective, how to integrate instructional strategies with these tools once you have chosen them and essentially how to use the tools effectively. So, this workshop the title and the main focus is pedagogy for effective use of technology in this course. This workshop is not about learning content in a specific topic, nor is it about techniques of conducting research. So, there have been other national mission teach 10,000 teachers workshops on these topics, but this workshop is not going to focus either on specific content, even though we will have lots of examples on content itself. This workshop is not about going deep into the features of technology tools. Instead, it is about how to use these tools effectively and the strategies that you can use with these tools. And finally, while it is a really important point, this workshop is not going to focus about how bad or about lamenting on the state of education either in our country or in your college or in your class and so on. We are all aware of these problems. In fact, Professor Fatak told us the magnitude, the scale of these problems, he emphasized that really well. What we will do in this workshop is look at one step ahead of that and see what are possible solutions we can use in spite of those problems. So, we will not take questions on what is going wrong, but we will try to locate and identify some answers to those. So, just repeating what the workshop is about. And at this point, you might have a question that okay, this seems to be an interesting or useful goal, but how do we get there? And unfortunately, there are no shortcuts. You can't find the solutions by listening to somebody else lecture, even if they are experts like our team here. What you have to do is activities, you actually have to create these strategies and work on the assignments, such as the pre workshop assignment that you have submitted hopefully submitted already. There will be several other assignments and in class activities that help you get there. So, let us look at two specific pedagogical strategies that we will use in this workshop itself. So, this and the next slide are fairly important and I will spend a little bit of time on these. One of the main theories that has been found to be extremely effective for student learning or for any learning is what is called active learning 
in which the learners and at this point the participants you are the learners are doing something other than watching somebody or listening. What do you do instead? You have to solve a problem, write something, talk to your neighbor, discuss, poll. There are a dozen or there are several dozen other strategies that come under active learning, but they go beyond mere listening and mere watching somebody write something on the board. So what you will do in this workshop is work on activities both individually and in groups. You will explore tools hands on in the labs and in homework. You will design materials for the courses and you will create your own active learning strategies for your own course. So without active learning there is really no learning. So you will learn both how to create active learning for your own course and also be learners using this technique. All our sessions will have active learning as the basis not just as one point but throughout our sessions you will see examples of active learning. Anytime you see a blue slide and you will see a lot of those in the coming sessions that this is exactly what you are doing. The other pedagogical strategy we will use is something called a flipped class and this is somewhat more recent and what this is is if you think about the, the nature of teaching and learning. There are two main aspects. One is that there is a lot of information or content that needs to be transmitted and delivered from the experts to the learners. And the other equally important or perhaps more important aspect of teaching and learning is that the learner needs to assimilate this content, understand at a deeper level, make sense of it, apply it. So all that goes under what we are calling as assimilation. So in a regular class, perhaps the information delivery happens in class and the assimilation happens maybe in homework or it is assumed that this happens. But in a flipped class, the information delivery happens using videos, short videos. So in all the sessions, you will be seeing short videos related to information on a particular topic, which are immediately followed by and interspersed with these active learning activities and that forms the those are how you will assimilate the content. So whenever you see a video, we will be using flip classroom throughout the sessions and we will also have a session where you can create a flip class for your own course. So what is expected of you to summarize is that you will sincerely participate in all activities and you will put in the effort to complete the tasks. The ultimate goal is that you will create and take away lessons and lesson plans and examples for effective use of ICT for your own topics. So now here is a question which I think is in all of your minds. If you do any of these don'ts, it is just that the workshop will not be very useful to you. So what can you expect from us now? We have designed, carefully designed lots of in class activities and sessions as well as incentives for completion which we will discuss in a few minutes. There will be a lot of Moodle based guidance as well as Moodle based uh, questions and activities and resources for the online phase. And you will have lots of opportunity for interaction in addition to the active learning points. So there is a view chat, you can pose your questions there, there is Moodle forums, we will have several sessions on frequently asked questions and there will be two way audio video interactive sessions every day. The workshop content, so after this I am going to go quickly into the logistics. So you will have sessions on course planning, writing assessment, higher order assessment questions, creating your own active learning classes. We will emphasize animations, simulations and other visualizations, flipped classroom as I mentioned. We will work a lot on promoting student collaboration using ICT tools like wikis because again this has been shown to be of a lot of use. Duration is not 3 days or 6 days, it is actually 4 weeks. Begins with pre-workshop assignment, you have already done that. There will be synchronous remote classroom mode these 3 days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week as well as January 19th, 20th and 21st where you will assemble in your colleges and there will be active learning sessions from IIT Bombay as well as lab sessions that you will do in the remote centers. There will be an online phase from Jan 8th to 18th. 
So, what happens in the SRC in the synchronous remote classroom phase is that we will have 2 to 3 A view sessions per day like this one. There will be 2 lab activities per day, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. Activities will be posted in Moodle and each computer in the lab needs to have internet access. So, here are some notes for the remote center coordinators. So, coordinators please make sure that participants have access to computers and internet for all the sessions marked as lab in the schedule that has already been posted. And for the lab on day 3, a microphone and camera are also required. Incentives, so we have open badges for which are online rewards that you will get if you are doing the activities promptly. So, these badges are of different types and at some point today either on Moodle or in one of the sessions we can explain more about these. We will give special names to different types of badges based on whether you have completed a large number of activities or how much you have helped other people on Moodle and so on. And also punctuality. And also on punctuality. Okay. What do you need to do for getting certificates? You have to attend. We have evidence of this through screenshots and also the RC coordinators can help us here. You have to promptly submit all assignments. If you are working on assignments and need more time, please let us know we can help you with that a little bit, but not a lot because there won't be relaxation of dates beyond just a little bit. But you have to submit all assignments. And if you do all this, you will get a certificate in this course. So, since I have been talking so much about interactivity, before we move on to the next session which is T, let me just look at the chat window here and see what comments or queries have been posted. What I have here on the chat window is in fact some responses to the question that was posed on the blue slide about 10 minutes ago on which ICT tools have you been using. So, let me just read out a few of these that you have shared with us. And from uh, Padampat Singhania University in Bhatevar, Udaipur, we have simulation tools and videos being used. Uh, from uh, some other centers, and many other centers are telling us that 3 to 5 sessions and so on. So, in some activities, we will explicitly ask you to respond through chat window and we will interact with you in this manner. 